Yeah, Buster, right away, boss. We're supposed to knock out the United States by this time. Uh, but, boss, we're building up our strength. We're... Yeah, but you're moving too slow. Well, what do we do? You and your communist pals keep trouble brewing in Asia and Europe. I'll go to work on the USA from the inside. You're going to plant an atom bomb, boys? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The seeds I've planted in the United States are far more deadly than atom bombs. Now get out! Inflation don't worry me none, so long as the government keeps farm prices high and subsidies high. Inflation is everybody's problem. And not with us farmers, by cracky. We're making twice the money we used to. What's the good of having twice as many dollars if you have to pay three times as much for what you buy? So, you reactionary city slickers just want to see us farmers go broke. That burns me up! <laughs> Now, John Q., business should raise prices to keep profit ratios in line. If business gouges labor with unnecessary high prices, that only feeds the fires of inflation. Oh, 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 now, John Q., if we businessmen stick together, we can keep profits high and keep labor right under our thumb. Well, if high prices make it impossible for the people to buy the goods that industry produces, Everybody suffers. Why, you crackpot liberal, let me tell you something. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, John Q., seems like the old paycheck buys less every day. Yeah, I have to dig into my savings most every week to keep up with inflation. Inflation can't hurt us, union boys. If wages don't keep ahead of prices, we'll strike. Generally, if wages go up, so do prices. Get him! Anti-labor if I ever heard one! Listen, bud! Reminds me of the... No, can't be. Unions demand farm prices skyrocket. Business demands higher profits. Prices soar. Defense costs zooms. Inflation threatens nation. Senator Brimstone will speak to the American people tonight. Tonight? And now, my friends, inflation simply means more money in circulation, which means more taxes, which means your government has more money to share with more and more people every year. I thought I recognized that guy. Somebody's got to stop him. Friends, I have proved that inflation is no threat to our nation. Not to me, you <laughs> haven't. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> I've got plenty to say, unless you're scared to let me talk. Scared of you? Ridiculous. Inflation can wreck us. Now let me... In 1940, the price of food was in easy reach of the dollar. By 1950, it took three times as many dollars to bring home the bacon. The same number of dollars it took to buy a complete outfit in 1940, in 1950 would buy only the bare essentials. An automobile that cost $1,000 in 1940 cost about $2,500 in 1950. $4,500 would buy a two-bedroom house in 1940. The same money in 1950 wouldn't put a roof over your head. 
A worker who retired on a pension, insurance, or savings in 1940 found by 1950 his money would buy only one half as much food and shelter. If inflation continues, the money a fellow has to live on will be practically worthless. Here's what inflation does to our cost of defense. In 1942, our dollars bought a lot of protection. By 1952, the same number of dollars would buy less than half the tools of war. Inflation can bankrupt us before we can arm ourselves. In peacetime, our industrial machine produces a stream of goods which can be purchased by the dollars we earn with our labor. In a war economy, the production of civilian goods must be cut. Our raw materials, labor, and capital must be used to turn out the tools of war. Our labor still earns dollars, but when the dollars go to the stores to buy things, they find war production has reduced the supply of goods available for civilian consumption. Now, more dollars are competing for less goods. This means higher prices. Inflation can be stopped if we remove the excess number of dollars that bid up the prices. Higher taxes can absorb some of the surplus purchasing power. Credit restrictions can require larger down payments to reduce the demand for scarce articles. Surplus dollars can be enticed to purchase war bonds to help finance the war effort. Dollars that resist temptation can find shelter in a savings bank, at least temporarily. If the government needs more money, it can tempt the bank to exchange the people's savings for government bonds. Financing the war as nearly as possible on a pay-as-we-go basis can reduce the forces of inflation to protect the dollar's purchasing power for today and the future. If the government wants to help in the fighting, it can stop all non-essential spending. Essential government spending must stop. Each of us must bear of his country above his own selfish interest if we are going to stop inflation. It may make our sacrifices easier to bear if we can imagine ourselves listening to the immortal words of Abraham Lincoln. At what point shall we expect the approach of danger? I answer, if it ever approaches, it must spring up amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free, live through all time or die by suicide. Now, Senator from Hell, Dorado, can prove that inflation will not destroy us. Let him speak. Why, I, uh, well, uh, uh, that is, uh, 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 uh,